Hello everyone, it's Dr. Hira here. Now we are going to talk about a very important topic about carbohydrates and that is hemiacetyl, hemiketal, and the Howard projection in carbohydrates. Um, so uh, let's talk about this one. And uh, in most of the uh, literature, and when you are drawing the carbohydrate saccharide structure, so you may have seen the ring conformation. So then maybe some time confusing for the students that how that uh, either we have to draw the linear or either we have to draw the ring structure of that one and how that ring structure has formed. So the basic objective of this lecture is that how we can learn that what are the factors, what is the influence by which the uh, carbohydrates do convert into the ring form in a closed cyclic ring structure and uh, what is the chemistry behind it so let's start so the first thing we have to define and differentiate between the linear structure and the cyclic or a closed ring structure is the that we should know what are the different terms which we use for these one so as uh, uh, we discuss about the carbohydrates, that these are the polyhydroxy derivatives of aldehyde and ketones. So it means there is the phenolic group, uh, there is the alcoholic group, and there is the aldehyde, the carbonyl carbon. Either it is in an aldehyde form or that could be in a ketone form. Now the term health projection is that uh, for that description. I've uh, shown this. Uh, figure there. So this is a linear structure. So this is termed as a linear and uh, more technically we call it as a Fisher projection. So Fisher projection means that we uh, this right side and left side is basically mentioning you the position um, of these groups along the um, spatial arra uh, arrangement that either that is on a front that is on a back side. So we do have um, talk about this one uh, when we were talking about the DNL conformation of the carbohydrates and we discussed the glycerol dehyde structure in detail. So you can just uh, review my lecture on the carbohydrate, which was the part one uh, for that detail. So when this linear uh, structure or the Fisher projection we draw on the closed ring structure, so this is called the Howard projection. Right, and I would tell you. So there is the um, different um, uh, points which you have to notice to draw the right structure, right ring structure in that form. Right. So uh, basically, uh, when this linear structure is rearranged um, intermolecular into the form that there is a one another covalent bond between the one of the carbonyl carbon uh, oxygen carbon and oxygen and one of the hydroxyl one so that is the result and we get this ring structure so um in fisher projection uh, there are the groups that this hydroxyl has the meant to be on the right side and this hydrogen has to be on the left side so how we have to exactly copy in the ring structure so the difference is only that there is the closed ring structure and there is a bond between uh, the carbonyl oxygen and the hydroxyl one but the rest of the group has to retain their position along the spatial region so we have to know that which group we have to write in a uh, downward and what we have to draw and the upward so in other terminology, these downward and upward is also mentioned as the axial and equatorial position, right? So on right on the Fisher projection, you will be right downward in the ring structure and the groups which are on the left side, you will write as upward position. So here we can see is that you just ignore this one because this is the aldehydic side. And when the aldehyde is combining with one of the hydroxyl one, so this is called, um, this is making a new bond, right? And this is rearranging itself in a position that now, if you just look at this one, this is the carbon, uh, this is the carbon and there it's carbonyl, right? This is the one. And then there is the 
two, one, two, three, four, five, and this is the six carbon, right? So the carbon one, here we know this one, right? So uh, this has formed the bond, its oxygen has bonded with this one and the one oxygen has hydrolyzed. So we are uh, just not uh, mentioning this position because there is the new hydroxyl group which has generated after the hydrolysis of that oxygen. I will, I will uh, explain in detail in the next lecture. So right now just focus on this one. What I uh, wanted to mention you that how you will mention the right groups on the ring position. So let's talk about the carbon two, right? So this is the, let me use a pen so that will be easier for you. This is a carbon one, this is two, because we always start numbering from the major functionality as like in the, uh, we have discussed in the organic compounds nomenclature. So you can check out my lectures on the carboxylic acids on the YouTube. So you will share, um, no, and I have talked about the aldehydes and ketones also. So you can check how we can nomenclature. Uh, uh, we have discussed IOPIC nomenclature. So you can check that for extra detail. And if you're interested to naming and numbering these compounds, so you can um, check out these structures. So basically, this is a carbon one, which is it is having the carbonyl functionality. So we'll start numbering this side, right? So this is the carbon one. This is the carbon two. This is the three and fourth. This is the fifth. And this is the sixth one, right? So right now you have to see firstly that what is that monosaccharide is. So we can see that this is the aldehyde. This is the six member sugar means it is a hexose. And on a third carbon, the hydrogen is on our right side and the hydroxyl is on the left side, right? So this is the structure of the glucose. Now we have to see that either that is a D-glucose or that is the L-glucose. So for this, we have determined that the farthest um, carbonyl, uh, farthest chiral carbon, which has a hydroxyl one. So we will examine uh, from the carbonyl one for assigning D and L configuration with reference to the D and L glycerol behind. So this hydroxyl is on the right side, just like the D glycerol dehyde where the hydroxyl is on the right side. So this structure is of the D glucose, right? I can mention that one. So this is the D, so this is the D, glucose and I can just write the abbreviation rather to name the full right so um, this is a D glucose and when it convert into the ring form so in how it projection how will mention these groups right so let's say this is a carbon 2 and its hydroxyl is on the right side right so carbon two hydroxyl is on the right side. So the four right side group, we have to write these downward, right? So this is on the downward side and the hydrogen is on the left side. So I will plot that, I will write, I will mention it on the upward direction. And same is for the carbon three, hydrogen is on the right side. So I will draw the line downward for the hydrogen. And this is the upward. So if you are just drawing this uh, um, equatorial line, so it means this is the upward one. So just to make it simplify that this group are visible, so we are not uh, moving it that like upward. So it, this is an equatorial position, so this is the upward one, right? So this is the hydroxyl, and same is for the fourth carbon. So in fourth carbon, hydroxyl is on the downward, so that will be on the downward side, and the H is on the upward side. So you have to remember this that the, you, sh you shouldn't switch that changes because if you will switch that position so you are changing the monosaccharide and that is no more the glucose right. So now we'll talk about that what make that ring structure. So hemiacetyl and hemiketones what they are. 
uh, when generally we are talking about the chemistry, chemistry and the reactions of different functional groups, so alcohols react with the carbonyl groups of aldehyde and ketones. And when they combine in a way that this alcohol is becoming the part of this aldehydic one, making a bond with the carbon through this oxygen. So this is making the hemiacetyl. And if the carbonyl which, uh, compound which is reacting is a ketone, so uh, of this reaction with alcohol, then the overall product is called hemiketone. So hemiacetyl is a product, uh, acetyl, you can take, uh, remember with the name of acetic acid or acid, uh, acetic acid, the carboxylic acid, right? So uh, whenever there is the um, aldehyde group, L, right? So acetyl, like the, um, uh, you can say the, um, uh, if you are taking about the um, any of the aldehyde group, simple acetyl group. So this is uh, by combining the alcohol, this is giving you the hemiacetyl. And if the alcohol is reacting with the ketone, this is a carbonyl which is in a ketone uh, class. So then you, uh, the overall product is the hemiketone, right? So if you just notice the structure, what has happened to this one when they are reacting with this one is that there is the oxygen, right? It has the lone pair of electrons, right? And there is a carbonyl, so that phi electrons are in the delocalization and they are in movement. So it means when it is taking back this electron pair, so it is making this carbon electron deficient, means carbocation one. So now this nucleophile can attack on it via the oxygen one, right? So this is making a bond with the carbon and oxygen. Now, because this oxygen was converted into the ionized form in the anion form, right? So it can capture that hydrogen to uh, convert into its hydrated form, which is the hydroxyl one. So similar is for the hemiketal one, but the only thing is this one, that in this case, we are having the two R groups, right? And one is the hydrogen, which is fixed because of this is the aldehydic side. But in case of the ketone, we already have the two R groups so, um, uh, sandwiched with uh, the carbon double bonded O carbonyl one, which is um, uh, surrounding the carbonyl group. So here, the third group is coming from the alcohol. So they are the three R groups in that structure. But the thing to remember is this one, that there will be the new bond between the alcoholic oxygen and the carbonyl carbon alcoholic oxygen and the carbonyl carbon and this carbonyl oxygen will hydrate it or reduce by this hydrogen from the alcohol. So these are the hemiacetyl and hem hemiketal. And now if we just examine the monosaccharides and carbohydrate structure, so these are the polyhydroxy derivatives or uh, uh, ketone or aldehyde. So they have the hydroxyl alcoholic functionality and the carbonyl all, um, both of these in the same molecule. So it means they intermolecular, so there is no need of any external reactant to uh, uh, form this hemiacetyl or hemiketal. So they do uh, uh, this adjustment within that molecule and they are converting into this one. So we can see because of that hemiacetyl and hemiketal, they are the two conformations. So uh, these conformations are alpha and beta conformations. So we'll talk about that um, which will be named as alpha and which will be named as beta, right? So the term uh, we will use here is the anomeric configuration. Uh, I will talk about the anomeric carbon and what is the anomeric configuration is. So anomeric carbon is basically this carbonyl carbon, which when convert into the hemiketal or hemiacetyl form, into the carbon, which is now the chiral carbon. This carbon one 
is called anomatic carbon because this is the carbon and carbon and now this has turned into the chiral carbon chiral carbon mean which is a carbon which is attached with the four different groups so this carbon is attached with the hydrogen hydroxyl the rest of this chain and there is it is directly attached with the oxygen so it means this is the center which is giving the stereochemistry of that carbon that by switching the position of this one that can generate another isomer of that one so this carbon one will be uh, examined with the position of this ch2oh on the carbon fifth to assign either that uh, molecule is the alpha conformation or the beta conformation right so we will see but firstly we have to look into detail as i was i was telling you that how this molecule rearrange itself to form the hemiacetyl or hemiketyl uh, so to uh, to get that these hydroxyl and the carbonyl face each other so they can uh, form the bond with each other with the more convenience and the stability uh, so when we talk about the cyclic structure so these uh, five member ring uh, the um, hexagon and the uh, hexagon and the pan uh, hexagon and the pentagon are the most stable one as compared to the three member or the four member ring structure so for the smaller monosaccharide they do exist predominantly in a linear form but when we have the hexoses pentoses so they do exist in the hexoses and pentoses monosaccharides also do uh, exist hexoses like they do exist in a um, um hepton heptanose uh, like the in a seven member ring but again that is not as stable as six member in a five member ring so more prominent are these one so uh, now firstly you just have to focus on it that how that has rearranged so this is a carbon one which is the chiral carbon so this chain is just twisting itself to rearrange with the minimum strain and keeping the geometry uh, stable for that molecule with equal distance so it is rearranging itself so on paper we are just um, drawing in a way that we are putting every bond in an equal length mentioning that this molecule has rearranged the best of its conformation right now this carbon 5 which is having this hydroxyl and this is the last of the achiral carbon ch2h which is attached to carbon five, right? So now um, in this, what is involved for this hemi acetyl hemiketal? We just uh, just recall the previous slide that there is a delocalization of this, and how that will fail, form. So I can one more time I can draw for you, okay? And this carbon is getting the electron deficient so this oxygen will attack on it to make the bond and this oxygen in return will capture this hydrogen make sense right so uh, this is the uh, bond which has formed and here you can see this is the c carbon 5 o and that is bonded with the carbon 1 and this carbon carbonyl oxygen has reduced with by accepting by taking up that hydrogen from the alcoholic side and this is the oh and this was the fix the previously there was the hydrogen here right so now this whole oh automatically comes downward so now this is the Havert projection of this one now the naming is uh, more technical and there is a change uh, in naming uh, when you are writing the name of the in the Havert projection you can't simply write the d glucose because then d glucose we are not uh, mentioning or we are not giving any information that either that ring structure is uh, in the six membered uh, cyclic or the five member ring and if you are writing only the d glucose d glucose means that you are only mentioning the linear structure 
So when you are writing in a Havertz projection, so you have to name this in a way. So first thing we says established because the reactant was a D-glucose, right? So um, the confirmation change from the D and H is not um, as easier as the hemiacetyl and ketyl, which are happening within the molecule. So this is not switching. Uh, it do exist, but at a certain uh, conditions uh, when met. So then that will be changed from the D to L, right? But otherwise, this is a D glucose. So then D glucose is again making the hemiacetyl because it's aldehyde one. So uh, here we get the D glucose, right? So D glucose is, but now this is in a ring structure. And there is another position by which we can assign that either uh, on the anomeric carbon, what is the position of that hydrocyl group? Either that is upward or that is downward, right? So we will compare this carbon one hydroxyl group with the carbon five CH2OH. If the both CH2OH on carbon five and OH on carbon one is sharing the same plane, right? The both are upward or the both are the downward. So then that is the beta confirmation. If they are opposite, like in here, we can see that this CH2OH is upward and this hydroxyl is the downward, right? So then we will name it as alpha. And that is the most um, existing and the prominent confirmation. They do exist in a beta form also, uh, but glucose um, is uh, uh, existing in alpha and beta confirmation, but fructose do exist more in the beta confirmation. So here, oh, hydroxyl is on downward and CH2OH is on upward. So it means they are in opposite direction, in opposite plane to each other. So it means we will assign the alpha, right? Alpha D gluco. So we are not writing the glucose, uh, the full word. We are skipping these O-S-E, S-E from this one. And we will add another term, which is the pyranose, right? And then we will end it with the S-E. So pyranose is basically to give you the idea that this ring is the six-membered ring. This is the hexagon. So why we um, assign this a pyranose? We will talk in a uh, next slide. So right now you just have to remember that if the ring, if the hemiacetyl is formed in a six membered ring, a hexagon form, so then we will write the pyranose. So this is the gluco uh, is the prefix from which the monosaccharide that has started. So glucopyranose is its Hewitt projection. Now D was its DLNL confirmation. Uh, which is mentioning the uh, farthest chiral carbon um, alcoholic uh, group position uh, from the carbonyl one, and either that is ample to the D glyceraldehyde or L glyceraldehyde. So this is a D. Now the alpha is for mentioning the hydroxyl position on anomeric carbon, which is a carbon one, which is the carbonyl carbon, but after making the hemiacetyl that has converted into the chiral carbon. Right, so uh, comparing this position with the CH2OH, so this is the alpha D glucopyranose, and this is the Havertz projection. So, something you are asked that you have to draw the Havertz projection of this monosaccharide and you have to name that one. So, you should know that if you are drawing the six membered hexagon structure and you are placing the hydroxyl downward, CH2OH on upward. So you should know that this is the alpha. And there may be that you have given that structure and you are asked for naming that one. So you should notice these positions. There could be the change on the third carbon too, to just to make sure that if you know the structures of the monosaccharide. So if I just switch the um, second carbon position or the fourth carbon position, so I can generate the apimers of the glucose, which were the mannose and the galactose. So you should know about that switching. Now the second uh, example is of five-membered ring. So here this carbonyl carbon is in a ketone form. So now this carbonyl carbon will 
make a bond with the carbon five. So again, this is rearranging itself and this is intermolecular rearrangement to bring itself into that phase that they can easily make the bond with each other and they can uh, attack on the carb um, carbocation. So again, uh, the same mechanism, this uh, uh, pi electrons will go back to the oxygen to uh, bring it into its anion form, making carbon electron deficient. So this oxygen can attack on it and this will be reduced later. So here, if you just look at this one, because this is a bulky group and it, there will be the twist in the bond. So it have to flip for bringing and to make that bond easily, right? So there's a carbon and this OH is upward and CH2OH is on a downward. So now if we just compare this one, unlike this one, so the first thing we have to decide is that this is a defructose. So obviously we will write the defructo, right? SE will be omit and we will add it later by mentioning the habit projection uh, ring structure that either that is a six membered or the five membered. So the four to five membered ring structure, which is the pan, uh, pentagon. So we will write the furanos, furane, right? And this is the pyrene. So uh, because they resemble the pyrene, six membered structure resemble to a molecule or compound, which is the pyrene. So um, that's why we name it as a pyranose and this is a resemble with the furane. So I will show you their structure in the next slide. So this is the furane and OSEOs uh, to mention that these are the carbohydrates one and the saccharides one, right? So this is a defructofuranose in Haworth projection. But one thing is still missing that we have to mention that where the position of that hydroxyl on the anomeric carbon Either that's sharing the same plane with the CH2OH on the carbon five, or this is in opposite direction. So if you just look at this one, so they both are in the same plane. So CH2OH is also on the upward direction, right? And this is also on upward direction. So they both are sharing the same plane. So we will name these as beta one, right? So do remember if they both are in the same plane, we will name beta. If they are in opposite direction, so this is alpha because the opposite is minimizing the strain of the bulky group. So that's why this is more feasible. So we are assigning this the alpha one. So um, now we will see why we'll name it as a furan and paranose. So uh, in health projection, as this is oxygen containing heterocyclic compound, which is the six membered ring with oxygen. So uh, when the carbohydrate arrange themselves in a six membered ring structure, they resemble the pyrene. So that's why we name these the pyranos and the five membered ring very much resemble to the furane. So that's why this has named, and they have analogy for with the furane. So that's why this is named as a furanose, right? So um, uh, in that way, you can name uh, in the Howard projection that what is the structure of the monosaccharides. Now the uh, term do I have talked about that what is anomers? So anomers are when they are different in the position of carbon one hydroxyl and carbon 5 CH2OH group uh, along this carbonyl carbon chiral carbon, the carbon one. So by this, we are assigning these the alpha and the beta. So in this ball and stick model that is again made it visible for you that you can see that here this hydroxyl, this uh, red ball is basically mentioning the oxygen and the white is for the hydrogen. So if you just see, this hydrogen is upward, this hydroxyl is downward. And here, this hydroxyl is upward, this hydrogen is downward. And this is sharing the same plane. So this is upward, this is CH2OH is upward. So that's why we are assigning this the beta confirmation. And now here, this is in opposite direction, this is upward and this is downward. So this is the alpha d glucopyranose. So um, this is basically to show you that the 
hexose or the glucose can do form both the uh, alpha uh, conformation or the anomers or the beta, beta uh, mono, uh, anomers because uh, they can uh, be changed in the both configuration of this hydroxyl one. So they do exist in alpha and beta form. Um, so uh, you can find out, but uh, in some is the larger one and some is in the less one. So uh, these are the conformations which are possible along the animals one. Now, um, the sugars can adopt different conformations. So this is a very interesting point about the carbohydrates that they are not in a strict and a very um, uh, proper hexagon form. So they have some kind of the, you can say the bended forms, which are making them the more um, stable. So the alpha anomer, the OH substituting of the anomeric carbon, carbon one is on opposite side of the sugar ring from the CH2 group at the chiral center that designated the DNL configuration. The other form is known as the beta anomer. We had talked about this one. So the do, two anomers of D-glucose have slightly different physical and chemical properties, including different optical rotations. So one will uh, rotate to the right side and one will rotate to the uh, left side. So uh, they do exist in uh, both anomeric form. So uh, these anomeric form are not exactly the same, though the chemically they have the same components, but the position on spatial um, rearrangement around anomeric carbon is a different. So that is making uh, them uh, different, slightly different in their physical and chemical properties. A given hexose or pentose can assume pyranose or furanose form. The small, uh, we talk about this one, that the three, four members are not as stable because they have the higher ring strain. And the seven member ring is also very rare in nature, but there are certain monosaccharides which have observed in seven member ring, but the six member and the fifth, uh, five member rings are always, um, not only about the, you know, the carbohydrates, but generally in other uh, chemistry um, organic compounds. So these are the most stable forms. So they do exist in a pyranose and a furanose largely. So the pyranose ring, like the cyclohexane ring, can assume a chair conformation. So in which the subsequence of each atom are arranged tetrahedrally, right? Because when we are just drawing it in a proper hexagon, so this is not mentioning that the sp3 hybridized carbon is in a tetrahedral form. So this is just, we are plotting in a, um, a specific angle um, and in a linear form or a 90 angle. So basically we know that sp3 hybridized has the uh, uh, 120 um, uh, angle, uh, 105 angle um, uh, of uh, the bond, and they do conform, they do exist in the form of the chair. So, this is the chair conformation of the cyclohexane, and in that particular case, we are talking about the pyranose ring, the um, hexose sugar, right? So, don't confuse with yourself that if uh, we draw the structure in that chair form. So it just means that this is the in a tetrahedral conformation. So that do exist in a chair conformation, not exactly in a proper hexagon. But uh, the both are used um, um, equally in the literature and in drawing the structure. So you can write even the hexagon, but more technically when you're talking about uh, or to depict the exact geometry of the compounds, so we do write in the chair conformation too. So that was about the hemiacetyl, hemiketyls, and the Howard projection. I hope you got that idea. So if you have any query, you should just let me know or comment um, on the video. So we could uh, discuss about if there is still any query. Thank you so much. Have a good day.